This video is about my new to me 2010 Ford Ranger and why I think the two wheel drive 2.3 liter 4 cylinder 5 speed Ford Ranger might be the best daily driver or runaround vehicle I've ever owned. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Chad and this channel is Purple Collar Life. Purple Collar is a term for the combination of white collar and blue collar work and this channel is all about our purple collar life and rural living in Northwest Pennsylvania. I enjoy vehicles and tractors and equipment, and I wanted to make this video for anyone considering buying the now previous versions of the Ford Ranger. I've actually owned three Ford Rangers from the time I was 16 until now, which we will talk about later in this video. The Ford Rangers that I'm particularly impressed with are these 2006 to 2011 Ford Rangers with the four-cylinder engine and the five-speed transmission. I believe that combination is only available in two-wheel drive versions, and I know what you're thinking. Chad, you live in the snow belt of Northwest Pennsylvania. You can't own a two-wheel drive truck. Well, you're probably right that a two-wheel drive truck wouldn't be great if it were my only vehicle. But since we also have the four-wheel drive F350 Super Duty Diesel, the four-wheel drive Ford Expedition, and the impressive in the snow Chevy Volt, I don't need to drive the Ranger on heavy snow days. And let's be honest, even though we do get our share of snow, the vast majority of my drive days in a 365 day year are on dry or plowed roadways and non-snowing days. I do like the 4x4 system that Ford uses on the Rangers and Explorers, and I do like the 4.0 V6 engine used in those vehicles. But for me, they are not necessary and only hurt the gas mileage. There is an automatic transmission available in the four-cylinder Ranger, but I prefer the driving experience with the five-speed manual and the better fuel mileage I get when I choose the shift points. With 143 horsepower and 154 pound-feet of torque, you won't win any races at the drag strip, but you will enjoy filling up the gas tank less regularly while sipping on gas during your daily commute or weekend errands. You might be asking why I chose the 2006 to 2011 years as my favorite Rangers. I like the body stylings in that design. I think the front grille is more impressive and looks like an F-150 of that era. I also like the newer interior design from the steering wheel to the gauges. And the 2010 and 2011 are my favorites of that era since they incorporate side airbags and traction control with roll stability. Now let's hear what I have to say about my new 2010 Ford Ranger. Oh, and if you haven't already, give that like button down below a click. I'd really appreciate it. Hi, Chad here with Purple Color Life, and as you can see, I've got a new truck. This is a 2010 Ford Ranger, two-wheel drive, 2.3 liter, four-cylinder engine with the five-speed manual transmission. You might be asking, Chad, why did you need a new truck? Well, like I said, lots of things have been happening on the channel. We sold the Jeep. I'll talk to you more about that in a future video. Mackenzie got her driver's license, so she's primarily driving the Chevy Volt now, and that was my daily driver. Jennifer and I talked about it. We decided that the Volt was the perfect vehicle for Mackenzie as a beginner driver. She probably won't use any gas when she goes to and from school, to and from practices, and to any friends' houses. To my parents, to Jennifer's parents, all those drives are within battery range without having to use any gasoline in the Volt. The Volt's also a super safe vehicle. It's got nine airbags, it's got lane departure warning, collision avoidance. Um, it's the type of safe vehicle that you want to put your 16 year old son or daughter in. So that's why we decided Mackenzie would drive the Volt primarily and I needed a new daily driver. Now I've owned a couple Ford Rangers. I owned one that was a 1986 Ford Ranger when I was about 18 years old through my college years. It was a great little truck. It had the extended cab. It was a 2.9 liter, five speed, four wheel drive. Great truck. Um, when I got my first job, I thought I needed a new vehicle. So I bought an Explorer and traded the Ranger in on it. It's one of those vehicles you wish you never would have traded in. Then I had a 2006 Ford Ranger, same setup as this, 2.3 liter, five speed, two wheel drive. It was a great little truck. 
Um, not great in the winter time, it did okay. I had a set of Michelin LTX MS2 tires on it and they were okay in the winter time. Um, did better certainly than most other all season tires, they've got a lot of siping. But when I was thinking about what vehicle I wanted now as a daily driver, I just kept coming back to how much I liked that 2006 Ranger. So I started searching for Rangers on the internet, on Auto Trader, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. For those of you that don't know, Ford stopped making the Ford Ranger in 2011. So like I said, this is a 2010. This was the next to the last year of production for this style Ranger. Now Ford did start manufacturing the Ranger again, I believe in 2019. So I believe 2019, 20, and 21, there are new Rangers available. But nothing like this, not a four cylinder, certainly not a five speed that gets the type of gas mileage and is as dependable and a value as this particular truck. Mackenzie and Jennifer say that my old silver Ranger looked like an old man truck and that this white Ranger also looks like an old man truck. I'm okay with that. Maybe I'm turning into an old man right now. But I like the cap on it. I like to have six feet of storage behind me if I'm driving down the road and I need to go get some two by fours or whatever, I can just put them in here. I believe the Ford Ranger two wheel drive, four cylinder, five speed is the best daily runaround vehicle you could have. You could be driving down the road, see a garage sale, pick something up, put it right in the back of the Ranger. You've got room for it. It's gonna be protected from the rain if you've got the cap on it. If you don't have the cap on it, you can get something even bigger like a four wheeler or a dirt bike fit it right in the back of the truck. It's super good on gas. I'm averaging between 26 and 30 miles to the gallon um, in the Ford Ranger, and that's about exactly what I averaged before with my 2006. In between that 25 and 30 miles to the gallon, sometimes a little bit more than 30, depending on how you're driving and where you're traveling. Now again, in Northwest Pennsylvania, we do get our fair amount of snow. In the two-wheel drive Ranger, not perfect for snowy roads, but also not horrible. You can see in the video, this has some pretty new tires on it. I think they only have about 2,000 miles on them. These are Firestone Destination LE2, and so far I'm really impressed with them. Now I haven't been in any snow, but they do great in rain, and I've driven through some heavy rainstorms. They're good in the yard. Um, anytime I have to back into the yard to get something or pick something up, they're good for that. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with them. I always like the Michelin LTX MS2s I had on my other Ranger and these are performing almost as good as those. They're nice and quiet on the highway. They seem to be balanced, nice and smooth and they're a good running tire. I'll do a future review just on these tires once I get some more miles on them. Now speaking of miles, how many miles would you guess is on this truck? I bought this 2010 Ford Ranger with 68,000 miles on it. That's pretty low miles for a 2010 vehicle. And it's in really nice shape. It's not in perfect shape. It's got a couple dings in it. It's got a little dent in it here and there. There's a dent right here. A couple door dings in the door. So probably not as perfect as I would have kept it if I bought it new and kept it all this time. But I also didn't pay for a brand new truck. I paid for a truck that I can use on a daily basis as a runaround vehicle to and from work on non-snowy days and Anywhere else I need to go, then I can just start it up, throw the garbage in the back, haul it to, down to the garbage can at the end of the driveway. If I need to go get some lumber, if I need to go get some supplies somewhere. This is much more economical than getting in the F-350 diesel. Now don't get me wrong, I love my Super Duty, but if I had to drive it 165 miles a day to and from work, I'd be using a lot of diesel, I'd be racking up a lot of miles on it, and the primary purpose for that F-350 is to tow the camper, to tow the boat, wintertime driving, um, and for larger tasks. This is a nice everyday task truck. Like I said, the truck's in really good shape. You can see there's no fogging or filming over these headlights, and that's something you see in some of the Rangers. There's also no rust. Here in Northwest Pennsylvania, every other Ranger I looked at had super high miles, over 150,000 miles, especially if it had the 2.3 liter engine. People just seem to drive those things forever, which is great to hear because I do believe they're a good, reliable engine. But they also have a high mileage or a lot of rust. Northwest Pennsylvania, we're known for our salt on the roads and that salt just destroys vehicles. 
The previous owner never drove it in the snow and the salt. He said he got caught out in a snowstorm maybe once when he was going to get groceries at one of those unexpected snowstorms, but didn't live far from the store, didn't have to go very far, and on a regular basis would not drive this if there was snow on the roads. You might be looking at this saying, hey, isn't that rust? No, actually it's not. It's something I'd much rather see than rust. This is oil undercoating seeping out from the door and from the body panel connection here. The entire frame is undercoated, the body's undercoated, and when I opened up the hood, you can see it looks dirty in there. That's oil undercoating. I'd actually much rather see that oil dirt than clean steel that's gonna rust in Northwest Pennsylvania. Now I was actually looking for a truck that had a cap, so think of the things I'm looking for. A used pickup between 2006 and 2011 that isn't made anymore, with under 100,000 miles, four cylinder, five speed engine, no rust, good tires, camper shell, and a couple other things that I'll mention in a minute. But trying to find that truck is nearly impossible. You can see this does have a nice cap on it. It's a fiberglass cap. There's a little bit of rust right here where the cap rubs on the tailgate, but that's nothing serious. That's just some surface from rubbing. Nice bed liner inside and under the bed is in really nice shape. So it's a nice cap, nice bed. That the bed was never abused underneath this liner. It's, there's no scratches, no dents, no bumps, no rust. The cap does have slider windows. If you ever wanted to have, if you ever wanted to sleep out, camp in it overnight, no problem. This truck does have a hitch with wiring. It does have what we call the third brake or the dummy brake light. 2010 did have some pretty nice advancements that I was happy to find. There are side airbags in the 2010 and 2011 Ranger, the only two years of this body style Ranger that have those airbags. The 2010 and 2011 Ranger also have roll stability control and traction control. Now this is the bare bones Ranger. It's got manual locks. It's got crank windows. And those are actually features that I wanted. I didn't want to have to deal with electronics. It could possibly go bad. Let's just keep it simple and keep it reliable. I do wish that this Ranger had a couple things and there were a couple things I was looking for that this Ranger doesn't have. If you look at the steering wheel, you can see there is no cruise control. And there actually were four cylinder, five speed Rangers that did have cruise control. Now most of those were XLT, and this is an XL, but some XLs did have that option. So unfortunately, no cruise control in my Ranger. Also, no fog lights. Again, the XL models typically did not have fog lights. You'd need to upgrade to the XLT. Does have delay wipers. Does have the traditional gauge cluster, tachometer, temperature, fuel level, speedometer, and then your indicator lights down below. It does have the most basic of stereos, AM, FM, four program channels. Like I said, it does have front and side airbags, driver and passenger. The stranger does have air conditioning. Down there is where you can see we have the ability to turn off our traction control and roll stability control. There's the five speed shifter. Even though this is the XL model, it does have cloth seats, which is one of the things I was looking for. I did not want the vinyl seats. I also didn't want the vinyl armrest because the vinyl armrest doesn't have any storage, whereas the cloth armrest does. This is a three passenger Ranger. There are speakers behind the seat, but in the XL, unless it was special ordered, 
those speakers do not exist. There's a cover for them, but not speakers in them. Right there's the airbag notification you can see on the side of the seat. So like I said, this might be one of my favorite all time pickup trucks available. I like the reliability, I like the simplicity, I like the fuel mileage, and I like it for the option of being your daily runaround vehicle or your daily driver. You wouldn't want to tow a camper with this unless it's a small pop-up, or I did see there's actually a truck camper made for a Ford Ranger like this, lightweight, about 800 pounds. So there are some options for a four-cylinder, five-speed Ranger. But super happy to have found this one in great shape with low mileage. Looks like it's gonna be a great vehicle for me. And as you know, I put a lot of miles on a vehicle pretty quickly at about 165 miles a day. So stay tuned, lots more videos about this Ranger in the future. I'm sure I'll be using it a lot. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends, and we'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching.